So um, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about myself. Um, as I mentioned, I'm, oh, you don't have to go away if you don't want to. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we're a team. Um, <laughs> so I, although I currently live in Baltimore, I actually spent the first 10 years of my life outside of Detroit in a small town. And at that point in my family's life, we didn't have enough money for childcare. And so every day in my family was take your daughter to work day. And I went to work with my mom, she was a secretary. She set up a small table for me in the corner of her office. And um, I would sit there and pretend to type on the typewriter and just try to be as quiet as possible. And as a consequence, I spent a lot of time with my mom and I got to hear a lot of her stories, especially about her childhood, which was very, very different than mine. Um, so my mom grew up in post-World War II Germany. Um, and their family had been through a lot during the war. And as a consequence, her mom had what was likely undiagnosed PTSD. And so my mom and her sisters learned very quickly, and sometimes the hard way, that when their mother said, be quiet, or please go outside and play, that they needed to do that to maintain peace in their small one-bedroom apartment. So I learned this ideal of respecting authority and listening to your elders from my mom. I really soaked it up like a sponge. And I didn't really think anything of it. You know, when I went to college, I noticed that other people seemed to be questioning the professor, and I was like, well, that's kind of rude. Um, but <laughs> I didn't really think anything else of it. And, um, you know, until this past year, you know, this, this last year, there has been a lot of news out of Ferguson and innumerable other cities across America about blatant misuse of authoritative power. And it's really made me question my stance. Um, but it wasn't until one April morning I was driving to work, drinking my coffee, listening to Morning Edition on NPR like I do every morning, and I was stuck at the same red light I get stuck at every morning right between the Baltimore City Jail and this big parking lot that I don't know what it's used for, and um, I heard the news of the death of Freddie Gray for the first time, and I went absolutely numb. I felt like a leaf being whipped around in the autumn wind. I went from disbelief and shock to sadness, and then just to anger. I was so angry. And you know, maybe it sounds silly to realize this so late in life, but I realized that if I want to be a change maker, then it's not only okay to, but I need to question authority when appropriate. Um, and you know, I thought back to this quote that Marshall Gantz often shares, which ends with, if not now, when? And I knew the answer was now. So two weeks later, Steph sent me an email and then gave me a call and said, hey, other Steph, would you like to be one of our cohort coaches? And that answer was an obvious yes. And this weekend at the summit, I think we've all been reminded of why. We've all heard inspiring stories of what can happen when you question the status quo and you challenge someone who you didn't think you were supposed to challenge. I mean, we heard the story of Andrew and others at Harvard who not only kept their department from being defunded, but created a center for primary care. And we heard stories of Carrie and David and others from Colorado who stood up to their university and said, we need this for our community. And even though not everyone in this room has done what Andrew and Carrie have done, we've all taken the first step. Because we are here on this beautiful Sunday afternoon um, when free time is precious, we've taken the first step and declared that we are leaders and we wanna be change makers. And so I am standing here in front of you, a straight-laced Midwestern girl with my knees shaking just only a little bit, um, to ask you to join me in taking the second step, right? You took a huge leap in getting here this weekend, but you can't stop walking. We have to keep going. And so I'm hoping that you will all go back to your chapters, have an awesome meeting with lots of sticky dots, and fill out the cohort application. Um, because if not now, then when? Thanks.